All right, I'm going to hand over to uh, Blake now to talk a little bit about some of the premium features that we have for um, for tiny MCEs, um, uh, the the paying customers uh, that surround that open source core uh, as well. So, Blake. All right, terrific. <clears throat> go ahead. Yeah, here we go. Uh, so just like Andrew did, a, a quick uh, baseline of what the core editor means. Just again, these premium uh, features and plugins, this is paid, paid functionality uh, that can extend the core functionality that, that we discussed earlier. Uh, you can see all of our premium features and plugins there on the screen in front of you. Uh, it's a healthy list. It's a growing list, as we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, and even though you know, we have uh, built out a lot of this premium functionality, you know, Andrew has mentioned uh, reaching out to us uh, in terms of if there's documentation uh, you'd like to see worked on. If there's premium features out there that you want to see in Tiny MCE, please let us know, and we'll provide some ways to get in touch with us here at the end of the webinar. Uh, so, uh, the big addition to our roster of premium features in Q2 was the skins and icon packs feature. Now, as the title of the feature suggests, this is a, a quick and easy way of giving you some ready-made skins and icon packs just to quickly differentiate your tiny MC, MCE UI uh, just a bit. Uh, we're going to show you some examples of this in a second, but first I want to talk about the why we made this feature. And to do that, I need to go back a little bit in time to February when we released to tiny MCE 5. Now, one of the things we were most excited about in tiny MCE 5 was the fact that we had moved from a very, very JavaScript heavy approach in the tiny MCE 4 UI and when we shifted to tiny MCE5, that UI was rebuilt from the ground up using uh, best practices of modern CSS. So what that means for our developers, for our designers, is that it's now much easier for anyone to get into those 300 plus variables, design variables that make up the tiny MCE UI and really customize it to your heart's content. That said, uh, not everybody may have the time or the inclination or the money to go in and look at every single of those every single one of those 300 variables, right? <laughs> so uh, for people who wanted to do something to differentiate their UI, make it a little custom, uh, we wanted to offer these skins and icon packs. And you see there on the bottom of the screen, we're gonna save you some time, we're gonna save you some money, and ultimately leave you pretty happy. So let's take a look at some examples. So first, uh, this is something, uh, a tiny MCE specific skin and icon pack working together. Uh, it's a smaller one. Uh, one of the things, uh, pieces of feedback we got from tiny MCE 5 was that some of our users felt that the default icon set was a little bit on the larger side. Uh, so we wanted to bring in some smaller icons uh, for those users. And in addition, uh, we provided a skin that's smaller overall. So if you want an editor that takes up a little bit less space in your application, uh, this would be an excellent skin for you to work uh, for you to work with. Yeah, and I'll I'll will just chime in there, Blake, and say I didn't know too much about icon design, but uh, you actually need to do, to have the SVGs for the icons coded to the particular size of the icons, um, so that they look the best possible thing. So it's not a matter of taking you know something that was designed for. Uh, 24 by 24 pixels and sizing it down to 16 by 16, you actually want to have icons that are specifically designed for 16 by 16. So uh, anyway, you, you, you're always learning something. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so next, uh, we have a couple of different skins uh, that are inspired by the material design design system. That uh, comes from our good friends at Google. Uh, their material design library is available for React, for Angular, uh, for Vue. Uh, very popular, only growing in popularity, uh, you know, for instance, the React library for material design that, is, that gets downloaded about 3 million uh, times a month. Uh, we have a couple different flavors of material design. Uh, here we have the classic view, and then we've also provided uh, an outline view as well. Uh, now next, uh, just as Google, of course, has their own design system, uh, so does Microsoft. Theirs is called Fabric. Uh, and just as Google uses material design across their suite of, of products, so does Microsoft. Uh, so look, if you're uh, building an application that you yeah. think may ultimately one day integrate with Google or may one day integrate with Microsoft, right here are two great ready-made skins uh, to help you get your application uh, yeah. looking and feeling uh, just like the Google or Microsoft uh, products that come directly from them. Uh, another very popular framework uh, that's out there is Bootstrap. And uh, we provided a skin for Bootstrap as well. Uh, chances are, if you're on this webinar or listening to it, you are uh, 
very familiar with Bootstrap, an extremely popular front-end library that was spun out of Twitter. Uh, it's been around since 2010, so it has uh, a, good, a good head start on material design and fabric, and you can see that in its, uh, in its popularity. Uh, and you can see they're used on 18 million websites and growing. Uh, there's a couple icon packs too. Um, uh, that we've brought. Uh, one is uh, these jam icons. This is a really popular third-party library. Uh, it's almost nine, 900 icons. Pretty much anything you can dream up needing an icon for, you'll be able to find it in this library. Uh, you can see on screen it's a little bit different, kind of quirky, kind of fun. Uh, we really like it and so we wanted to include it here. Uh, and one really cool thing about this icon pack and really any of the icon packs and skins you're seeing is that these can all be mixed and matched uh, to create something uh, even more, uh, even more a little unique, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and I might add that uh, given that they're such broad libraries, the material UI, for example, um, the jam icon set is that hopefully you can find icons that match any custom toolbar buttons or uh, uh, similar things that you need um, in your application as well. So uh, that's certainly been part of the theory of, of what we're doing here. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, and then finally, uh, the last one in terms of the skins and icon packs to talk about is the no border. Uh, this is great for anyone who wants to use the editor in full screen mode, or perhaps you have your own custom borders uh, that you want to wrap the editor with. So here's, again, a ready-made skin that makes it much easier for you to do just that. Uh, the other big news in Q2 around our premium features uh, was the release of PowerPaste 5.0. A new major release of PowerPaste, uh, which is pretty exciting. Uh, some of the big improvements here were that we've added support for cropped images. Uh, it used to be if you were working in Microsoft Word and you cropped an image and then pasted that into Tiny MCE, uh, the cropped part of the image was not retained and the original image was shown in your editor. Uh, so we've now resolved that issue. And so cropped image support has been added to, tiny, uh, to PowerPaste 5.0. Uh, we've also removed legacy flash support. Uh, it's not needed since all of our supported browsers can now allow JavaScript access to the clipboard. Uh, so we've been able to streamline PowerPaste 5.0, streamline the code base a bit, which is always nice. Uh, if you're a cloud user of PowerPaste, your plugin's already been updated and the terrific benefits of cloud. Uh, if you're a self-hosted user, uh, you will need to go and download the latest version. Uh, if you're not quite sure where to find that download, please reach out to our support team and uh, we'll be happy to point you in the right direction. Uh, finally, in terms of uh, what the roadmap looks like around our premium features, uh, we'll be uh, taking our advanced code editor and bringing it in line uh, to, the, uh, to the use of the editor. Uh, those of you that are familiar with advanced code editor, you know that today uh, when you invoke it, it pops up in its own modal window. Uh, we'll bring that, be bringing that advanced code editor in line. We'll be adding a new skin inspired by Google Docs, which is just a bit different from material design. Uh, we'll be adding some advanced table functionality, uh, such as the ability to drag and drop table rows and columns. And we'll also be bringing a tiny export plugin to market with the ability to download your content into a number of different formats. Uh, you can see a few there on the screen in front of you. Um, again, want to add, please, please reach out to us if there are skins, if there are icon packs, if there are uh, <clears throat> file formats you want to see included in the tiny export plugin. Again, please drop us a line and let us know.